The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Hello and welcome everyone to this evening's Compline. I'd like for us to start with a hymn, Speak, O Lord, by Keith Getty and Stuart Townend. I love how this song helps to transition us from a busy day into a quieter time of openness and listening. Do join in if you'd like to, or keep your ear open for all mentions of faith. week I've been doing a bit of research into the disciple Thomas, the disciple who wouldn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead until he had seen with his own eyes. I've always had a great deal of sympathy for Thomas being labelled as doubting, not having enough faith to just believe. It seems unfair for his life to be so defined by that one thing, Earlier in the Gospel, he could just as easily have been called Thomas the Brave. In the Gospel of John, 
it is told that when the other disciples try to persuade Jesus not to return to Jerusalem, where they thought he was in danger of being stoned, Jesus decided to go anyway, as his friend Lazarus was ill. And Thomas said to the other disciples, let us also go and die with him. What a great, brave and loyal line. And it shows Thomas in such a different way. I have a reflection and poem by Eddie Askew from his book Facing the Storm that looks deeper into faith and loyalty and I'd like to read it to you. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus are interesting characters. They were twilight disciples. We are told that Nicodemus first came to Jesus by night. They believed but stayed in the background during Jesus' lifetime. Yet, when all the others had run away, Joseph and Nicodemus came out into the open. They went to Pilate and committed themselves openly by asking for Jesus' body. What intrigues me is the moment they chose to reveal themselves. It seems to be the worst possible time. It was after Jesus had died and it was before the resurrection. Somehow, the crisis of the crucifixion gave them courage to declare where they stood. There was no buoyant hope to carry them along. Jesus was dead. And that seemed to be the end of it. We know that the resurrection lay ahead, but they didn't. And this was the point at which they went to Pilate. We don't know what went on in their minds, but it suggests to me that the time when faith and action are most important is when things are at their worst. It's not the time to hide and tremble, but the time to do something. The other thing that strikes me is that at this time of disappointment and danger, the secret disciples were the only ones who did show up. All the others were in hiding. And realising that, I wonder if maybe it's time we stopped judging the soundness of our fellow Christians and the worthiness of their actions and left that to God, because we just don't have enough information to do it. And then Eddie Askew's poem to go alongside. Lord, I wonder where I'd be, out in the open, committing myself publicly, or cowering in an upper room somewhere. I think I know. It's hard being honest, especially with myself. Words of commitment come comfortably, sweetening the day with cut price sincerity. Promises. Buy now, pay later. Peter did. I hear him. Lord, whatever the rest may do, I'll never leave you. That's what he said. And you and I know what he did makes you think, makes me think anyway. The easy words, sincerely meant, give credit where it's due, but sparse in understanding. Easy to say when you don't know where they'll lead, but when the crisis comes and promises come home to roost, then words are not enough. And with the roosting comes the sound of cockcrow. Forgive me, Lord, I knew not what I said. Yet failure isn't final. The quiet ones came out at last, out of the shadows, found courage in their grief, found strength to stand. To them, the blessing of receiving Christ, dead but alive.
Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Today I'd like us to read Psalm 101 together, using the NRSV version. I will sing of loyalty and of justice to you, O Lord, I will sing. I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Perverseness of heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. One who secretly slanders a neighbour I will destroy. A haughty look and an arrogant heart I will not tolerate. I will look with favour on the faithful in the land so that they may live with me. Whoever walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall remain in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Morning by morning I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Let's think for a moment on the first line. I will sing of loyalty. As we ask for help to be loyal to our friends, through good times and bad. As we ask for help to be loyal to God and his teachings, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. For our Gospel reading, I'd like to read an extract from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, or extracts from it. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's think for a moment about the comfort in that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in that closeness, bring your own thoughts and concerns to God. And now, using the prayer on the screen or at the bottom of page 20 of your booklet, we say together, O oh God, help me to trust you. 
Help me to know that you are with me. Help me to believe that nothing can separate me from your love, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so on to the Lord's Prayer, using whatever version you feel most at home. We say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I hope you have a restful evening and a night free from worries and cares. Sleep soundly. God is awake. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace.